morning guys um, I've just trying to do this video regarding uh, putting the um, license plate on the back so it's raining so I haven't been able to video this completely um, I'll try and do it as quick as I can because it's coming down quite heavy I basically put um, like a masking tape as a center point between these two parts of the lower diffuser um, I haven't got to be mega straight but obviously as neat as you can get it I've got it pretty much in between those two lines um, and then I used this tape which I got from um, I believe it is Amazon um, I can actually put the link in the display uh, if anyone needs it but it's basically uh, license plate uh, adhesive um, obviously you need marketing tape and you'll need your license plate which obviously goes on there this is my old one obviously uh, I should retain the same number and then yeah so then you unpeel these off and then actually stick this onto it the only problem like I said is that every year um, you may have to renew these um, you will also need a very very sharp pair of scissors um, because this stuff just doesn't cut it and if it's raining like it is today either a lever or a drying towel to obviously um, go over the because uh, I say it's, it's raining as I'm actually doing this um, yeah so what I did think about then was actually um, maybe getting because obviously this is going to overhang so if you look from this angle it's actually um, uh, beveled in so I mean it's stuck in there very tight but what I might do is actually get some rubber um, inserts double-sided again that sticks to this that will bring this out um, it's quite a lot of area here I mean your plates around the UK might be different but it's got a good I'd say 80% of coverage from the top of that part there down to here so yeah so I think that actually uh, might do the trick um, it is just about to become daybreak I'm trying not to get this uh, lens wet if I can help it um, and I will be going up to the uh, test centre in about another hour and a half but the traffic is always bad going into the town where I work so I'm going to leave a bit early and maybe get some breakfast and I'll catch up with you in the uh, test centre bye for now guys morning guys welcome back um, I've just arrived at our um, MOT test centre which is Mr Unique's um, I say this is going to be a first for them um, we've had hybrids done but not BEVs I'm aware of um, they probably obviously don't work on BEVs because the old shape uh, leaf would have definitely needed an MOT about three or four years ago like the early ones that is so I'll um, see how we get on and I'm a little bit early so I will speak to you guys in a little while bye Welcome back guys, um, just had my um, first compliance test done, um, got all the paperwork ready for the licenses to be done later, the only issue with the vehicle was, and I was getting quite worried, <laughs> um, so that's the uh, compliance as well, um, the only issue was, was that the vehicle is so new, and on the records on their database, uh, DBLA hadn't actually updated um, the uh, registration because obviously it's a, a personal plate um, but I had all the paperwork from the car like the VIN number and the chassis number and all that on paperwork that I actually kept which I thought would be potentially relevant state and it, it proved uh, a wise choice um, if you're looking at this in months years time obviously the vehicle is going to be very established by then um, as the old shape uh, was and so you probably won't have these issues um, but say so if you actually are actually using this vehicle in the next few weeks um, you might want to take all your documentation uh, obviously if you're having this as a private or a taxi uh, around the United Kingdom at least um, you might want to just take your um, documentation from the dealership that's got all of your details of the vehicle on a printout and then they can retrieve it which is what these guys did anyway guys uh, i've got about um an hour and a half to kill so i'm gonna pop up to the office i'm gonna get some new door signs for the vehicle and then i've got the appointment at 10 30 to actually get my licenses 
um, and after that um, I might actually start working really looking forward to it guys I'll speak to you soon so guys just printing the council all licensed all done front badges are in the window and that one is perfectly where I wanted it um, I don't know you're going to be able to see this if it focuses good enough but it went on really really well it's obviously it's a little bit of play down there but I can actually fill that up with like I say rubber in that bit but predominantly it's about 80% is actually on there pretty nice and it's uh, really flush so yeah overall really pleased about it that went on and uh, now I'm going to uh, go into the town do some banking and I will um, log on for a little bit Grace and I'll upload this uh, sometime this afternoon bye for now afternoon Grace um, I've actually stayed out working uh, where's the time um, about two hours longer than what I would have anticipated doing today um, the reason that is is because um, as I wanted to get to grips with uh, the vehicle uh, unfortunately um, it's been a baptism of fire which is good for you guys um, I haven't obviously done a full range test but I've had the climate control on uh, all the time I've been out for the last uh, including them two and a half hours uh, I actually started work at uh, about 10 no it was about 11 o'clock this morning so I've been working since uh, so that's 11.30 uh, 12.30, 1.32, so about four hours I've actually done. Um, I've only covered um, about 34 miles in that time, um, and I'm actually still showing 105 miles on the uh, GOM. Uh, but so I have actually had the climate control, because obviously I've had to demist the windows, because obviously people have got into the vehicle soaking wet. Uh, and as you probably know in uh, internal combustion engine vehicles, you have to have the heating on or the air conditioning on quite a lot. So, um, and it's only been showing an extra seven miles divided off so it's no major biggie which is exactly what i actually wanted to do um you have to excuse me a minute i did actually go to greg's earlier but i'll eat that later when i get home um boot uh, the boot the, the glove box is actually surprisingly a lot bigger than what i thought it was when i was at the show it actually seemed quite deep but um it's actually i'll show it on another video when i do a complete in, inside of the vehicle um, it's actually got an indent in the uh, uh, front panel that, uh, that you open uh, so you can actually get slightly bigger things in there which is really really handy um, oh that was the other thing um, I couldn't do the video I have actually picked up uh, two people with um, uh, wheelchairs uh, the standard wheelchairs, so I will actually do full videos of this uh, uh, in, t in due course. The standard wheelchairs that actually collapse and the um, uh, the feet rest come off. They go in a boot, easy peasy, got loads of room. Um, didn't even need to fold the rear handles down. Um, and the big box uh, trolleys that a lot of our mums or elderly people will have um, that normally have a handle that comes up, uh, they go in the boot fine, uh, but you have to put the handle ending first again i will do these videos with when it's dry it's just soaking wet and i don't want to ruin this camera um because it is coming down very heavy so you have to basically put the handle end in first and then put the wheel end in after if that makes any sense so they go in fine um and as i say that uh, wheelchair user i picked up it was a lady with her daughter um, they had uh, a full complement of shopping as well and it all went in with room to spare um and i say i will actually do my I, I my next video i'm going to upload is definitely going to be the e-pedal because i really want to uh do some uh uh chat about that e-pedal because this is absolutely amazing I've, it's so intuitive um when i was on the test drive with uh derek although he did actually offer me to go out further uh, on the road with it um it felt good enough for the very short distance we had but the thing I love about it is uh, most most multi-story car parks have like um, the very very high uh, speed humps um, and normal speed humps in the road that you see that are either the flat type or the full width road ones. You can go over those with absolutely perfect precision. I mean, in terms of speed, so you can absolutely neg absolutely negate the um, runoff point um, because of the uh, uh, motor regen. Whereas my old automatic uh, internal combustion engine, when you go over them, because um, it's got gears, 
as you go over it, it might go from first into second and it might roll off it. These, you can literally go over it and just keep it perfect, inch by inch. I mean, it's like the precision of driving with this e-pedal is absolutely phenomenal. But I say, I will actually uh, talk about in depth for that on my next video, which I'm going to center on the uh, e-pedal, um, because it's, I think, absolutely uh, a game changer, like I said earlier. Anyway, guys, I'm about to drive off now, and I will catch up to you soon. Cheers, guys.